are going to be working on plyometrics this week. And what is plyometrics, you ask? Well, let me give you the handbook definition. Plyometrics is an exercise involving repeated, rapid stretching and contracting of muscles. Like when you jump and when you rebound, right? So this helps increase muscle power. And why do we need plyometrics as skaters? Because we are consistently jumping on a daily basis. When you're going up into the air, you need all that power in your muscles to get you up into the air to rotate as many times as you need for your complete rotations of your jumps. So today we're gonna to be focusing specifically on the tuck jump. So let's get started. So to be able to prepare for the tuck jump, what I'm gonna do is warm up my knees. So I'm gonna just kick my glutes as so. All right, and we wanna get those muscles warmed up. We wanna feel that our knees are prepared to lift up into the air for that big explosive jump. Okay, now high knees. Lifting your knees up is essential for tuck jumps. We need to be able to bring our knees into our chest. Like pretending you're jump roping with your feet together. Having your feet 
freaking out like this and having zero control with what's happening on the lower half of your body is not gonna help you when you're trying to convert this rapid explosive technique of jumping to the ice. You wanna try to think about practicing what you think you wanna do on the ice on the ground, right? And what you wanna do on the ice is be able to control every part of your body. So just doing simple exercises like this can test exactly how you're going to react when you get on the ice. So a common example of that is people are really frustrated with not being able to squeeze their ankles together. They have a hard time squeezing their ankles or their ankle is all the way up here when they're doing jumps. But did you practice things on the ground that can help you test out if you could actually feel and place your feet together? So an easy way to do that is with this. So now that we've got that covered, let's go into the tuck jump now. What we're gonna do is practice bringing our knee high as so in a high H. And we're gonna feel our quads working and our glutes being activated, right? Because you wanna think about bringing your knees into your chest and then you're also gonna feel as though your heel is touching your glutes, right? So we could do five high H's and five tuck exercises on each leg. So we're gonna do five here. One, two, three, four, five. Now tuck it. One, two, three, four, five. Awesome. Okay, so let's get ready for the touch up. Let me demonstrate. So I'm gonna put my feet together as so. I'm gonna bend my knees. You can get a little bounce for rhythm. I'm gonna bring my arms back and kind of pull in, not all the way like a jump, but I'm gonna use my arms to help with my rhythm and momentum, okay? So I'm gonna bend my knees and I'm gonna <laughs> lift as so. Tucking my knees into my chest, using my strong core to stabilize my upper body. I'll show you a side profile. I'm gonna bend my knees. One, two. And as you see, I land close to my toes, ball of my foot, and then I place my whole foot down. You do not want to land on a flat. If you land on a flat, you're gonna hurt your Achilles and that's not gonna be good for you to react into the next jump. Cause I don't want you to just do one. We're gonna do several of them in a row. 10 to be exact. We're gonna be doing 10 tucks in each set. We're gonna do three sets, okay? So let's begin. Get your water, get whatever you need, shake it out, and we're gonna go for it, okay? Ready, begin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Fantastic. If you need a break, get a break. As I talk about common mistakes, common mistakes I see with the tuck jump is that your knees don't go all the way into your chest. So you're not working your core, right? It's like this. You're putting more emphasis on the jump as opposed to how you're gonna be using your quadriceps to be able to pull your knees up into your chest. <sighs> I've had a breath. Forgot to tell you that this is also an endurance workout. <laughs> okay, so try to bring your knees into your chest so you don't make that common mistake. Another common mistake is sideways feet. Make sure that your feet aren't going like that in the air. We're not doing high school musical, right? I don't want you to strain your back either. Make sure your back is nice and tall. As so. You're pulling a string through your head and you're lifting straight up. Okay, I'm gonna do a side profile. We're gonna do that 10 more times. Ready, begin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow. Okay, walk it out, walk it out. I'm sweating. Let me know in the comment section below if that's a difficult move for you. Are you able to do 10? Are you able to do five? If 10 is easy, are you able to do 20 in a row? I used to do 30 in a row before almost every single one of my practices. It was a quick warm up and it was easy for me to exercise my whole body because this is a complete total body workout. And it really prepared me for that explosiveness on the ice. Last time, we're gonna do 10 more and then we're done. Ready? Feet together. Bend, bring your arms back and forward, okay? Ready, begin. 
hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ta da! And there you have it, guys. That is the touch up. Let me know in the comment section below how that was for you. Was it hard, easy, or medium? Love you all so much, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Skate with Michelle. Bye!